Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you four ways to find the radius of a, an arc. So this is, let's say, in the field and you're given an arc, but you don't know what the radius of the arc is. You want to solve for that. So let's go to first method is in the field. If you have the room, you can measure, uh, you can do, there's a circle theorem that all chords, the perpendicular bisector of all chords intersects the center of this circle. So if we have a chord that cuts across this way, or this way, it doesn't matter. So let's trim those up. Now that all those are chords, so if we go V, control K, J, A, A, enter, go 90 degrees away from that one there. And then the same thing, V, control K, J, A, A, enter, away from that one. Enter, let's shorten this one up. You know, roughly that's the center, V, control K, J, A, A, enter. Another 90 degrees away from that one. And so all those are intersecting there at that point. If we trim those up, they all intersect exactly in the center of that circle. So that's the, that's the theorem that we're using here. And it's the same thing for an arc, right? This section. <clears throat> so what we've done here, what I did here was in the field, I like to use the greatest, the biggest I can possibly use. If I have the room, I'm going to make this arc, which is all the way, actually the same distance it is from here to here. So that I have the biggest possible arc. So I'm going to swing these two arcs and where they intersect, that is the perpendicular bisector line of that cord. <clears throat> So I can snap a line from that perpendicular bisector to here. So then that's no trig, no math, really just snapping out lines and finding anything right. And then at the end, you just go from the center of where they intersect at four to there, and you got your, your radius. So here, this is not using trig. It's a similar triangle. So let's zoom in here a little bit. We don't know the distance, the radius yet, right? This is a uh, 10. And four. So we've measured in the field, we've measured 20 foot width, four foot height. And uh, the this angle here is this uh, the right triangle, this angle. And that means this angle are going to be common with this triangle and this angle. So these two are similar. So this, this, uh, this actually, let's do this. Well, let's make that smaller. So there's this one, control H, control C. So there's, that's a right triangle here. And this is a, an angle, let's call it the green angle. We don't know that it's common with anything yet. Control V would be here. So this triangle, right? Is also has that and it's a right triangle. So that now as we know, it's a common leg, common angle. So these two triangles, this one here and this one here, are similar. So if the, whatever this is, 180 minus that will give us this angle. And 180 minus this angle will give us the same angle. So those two are similar, and that's just important to know. Uh, in case you forget, it's not half of anything. That's just how you find out what that is. I mean, you can, it's obviously half of this. The, so there's... There is a, this angle is one half of this angle, right? The, right there, enter, out M A. K, K, that's not correct. There. That's not correct, so, and then I have three. So that's sometimes you'll see uh, when you're doing uh, the angles that 
it says, oh, it's half of that, but until you know where it comes from, it's good to know that's where it comes from. So these two are similar. And uh, if four divided by 10 is the, the ratio of this rise to run, then the same ratio applies to this triangle, this to X, right? All right, so <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll solve four is to 10.7703 as 5.3852 is to X, right? This is the, the rise to the diagonal and this is the rise to the diagonal. Uh, and we have to calculate this rise using uh, the uh, three, four, five. So four, 10 squared plus four squared. I don't think I did that here. T four squared plus 10 squared. And then we want the square root of that. Four, two, four squared, right? And we can plug that right into the calculator. Control C, tools, calculator, control V. And we'll get the 10.7703, and then half of that, where the perpendicular bisector is, so we know that that's intersecting the center, would give us the uh, ratio. So then I did that here. I'm uh, starting to get those remnants. Maybe the video is going to get screwy. Uh, so that we have 4 divided by 10 is equal to, so that, that I did it here actually, 10.773 uh, is to the diagonal. So 4 is to the diagonal. The rise is to the diagonal in brown here as this should be blue, let's make it blue, as 5.382, the rate, the, the rise of this triangle is to the diagonal. So those are equal. And then I've done that, what I did here was, I just moved the, the geometry around. So four to 10 as five is to R. And using a little bit of algebra, we solve for R, move R to the top. This goes to the bottom. So that's how you end up with this times this divided by four. And you'll end up with 14.5. That's uh, another way, you know. Trig, you can measure the height and the, the rise and the run. So we'll call this the run. I mean, uh, in the, in the, Construction master, that's how it's called. They call that the run and this the rise. But it's actually the width. So you measure the width and you measure the rise, right? And uh, you calculate the diagonal using the same uh, Pythagorean theorem. You have the diagonal two, which is this. We're just going to divide that in half, right? Now we have this uh, length. And then uh, the angle, we can calculate the angle, right? This one which would be arctangent of 10 divided by four to give us this angle. And we know, well, just to show you that it's the common leg and then that minus 180 minus that will give us this, 180 minus that will give us this also, just showing there that they're the same again. So that's the D measure. You know what the deflection angle is, you know what the center angle is. And then you can calculate the, uh, the radius uh, right here. I'd like to get into the, that's the angle. There's the, this divided by two. And then a sine of 21.8, I don't know why this should be maybe blue. Let's make it blue. Sine of 21 is 5.3852 over X. Uh, let's see, 5.382 over R, I'm sorry. This should be R, right? And then, uh, so solving for R, you get uh, R goes to the top, this goes to the bottom, 5.3852 divided by the sine of 21, right? That's what we did, and you'll end up with 14.5. Gives you the radius again. And then here's the circle theorem. Uh, that's another circle theorem that says uh, this side, so this is your chord. So divide the chord into two. This side of the chord times this side of the chord is equal to this height times this. And in this case, this is the unknown. I don't know what that is. It's written into something. Let's say, uh, so now you just show, I'm just showing you the algebra here. 
Uh, we have, uh, so that's the circle theorem that I'm talking about. A times A is equal to H times X. <clears throat> so A is W divided by 2, the width divided by 2, times the width divided by 2. That's what A equals, right? Uh, equals H times X, H times the unknown. So then we solve for X. We get W2, uh, w to the uh, w squared divided by 4h. Uh, let's jump to step. W2 divided by 4 is equal to h times x. Where does that come from? So w2, oh yeah, so if you do w squared, w divided by 2 times w divided by 2, we end up with w squared divided by 4. That's what that is, equals h times x. Move the x to the other side, you get w squared divided by 4h equals x. So now that's what x is here, right? But we need to know what h plus x is will give us the diameter, right? And then divide that by 2. So the radius is equal to h plus x, h plus x divided by 2. So we can put that in right now. So we'll divide both sides by 2, h divided by 2 and x divided by 2. So h divided by 2 plus this divided by 2, which would be w squared divided by 8h. w squared divided by 4h times 2, yeah. So there's your w squared divided by 8h. So h2 divided by, or h2 plus w squared divided by h. That's where the formula comes from. So, I mean, and I think I did it here. So I plugged in the numbers. That gives you, just showing you how to derive it because, you know, it's, there's a number of formulas out there. It's easy to get confused. Some tests you might take and they'll show you this, but in the field, you might forget this, but the trig, you might not have the ability to do trig. You might not have the room to do it this way. You might not have the room to do it this way, right? Um, you could actually do it this way with no trig, right? Solve calculations. Yeah, or you can do it this way with just a formula. I had a gang box on the job that had this formula on it and I never used it once. I used to always use this method here and actually put it into an Excel. And so I'll, I guess I'm using it over and over. <clears throat> so we have uh, four, which is the height right here. This is the field measurement. width is 20 so we have 4 divided by 2 plus 20 squared divided by 8 times h which is 4 and you'll end up with 14.5 important if you're going to put this in a Formula that you use the parentheses when it required. Probably don't need it here because it's already knowing that this is before the plus sign. Let's try that. Let's get rid of that. Let's see what do we minimize those parentheses. Just showing you that it's required uh, sometimes to just, I use it because it makes it simpler for me to see what the heck is going on. So I think that would be the minimum amount, 20 squared. I think that would be the minimum amount of a, uh, Parentheses. Compute should be 14.5. So it's the same thing, but sometimes I'll put the parentheses in there so I can see that the grouping is more clear for me. So that's how you do it. Uh, that's a little longer than, that's actually not too long for showing you four different ways to get it. Uh, you can also use the Construction Master Pro version, whatever the latest, one of the latest one or two versions are. And you go to arc and you put in uh, the rise, the run, and then you hit arc and then arc, 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 and it'll start scrolling through and it'll actually give you the radius. It solves it for you. Mm, let's see. And then, uh, you know, in Excel, let's see if we could just do uh, all these can be done in Excel too. But I would kind of need a, a individual Excel video for that one, this one, and that one, because they're probably going to take about five or ten minutes each. In the field, it works really good. Uh, no math. Uh, even in the computer, you can kind of just do the same thing. You can get the rise and run and do it on the computer and get a good number for your radius. Uh, in here, you can get the rise and the run, and we 
This was the ratio of the similar triangles. The rise to the diagonal is equal to the rise time to the diagonal, and then solving for that. We have a trig. Using the trig, what I just did, that's the formula I just did. The reason why I did it on there is because trigs on Excel, you gotta use, remember to everything in there is defaults to radians. And then this was kind of a new one for me. I'd seen it, never used it, but I figured out how you could derive it in case you forget. It's easy to derive a formula if you know how it's, uh, it's really easy to remember a formula if you know how it's derived. So that's how you derive it and solve it. Hope that helps you in your endeavors. Help me like make a lot of money and gave me some job security. Hope it does the same for you.